In the second part, we're going to talk about dynamic estimation, where in the first part we talked about dynamic modeling, empirical, and fundamental, and now we're going to move on to estimation. So that's a situation where we have a model of our system, and we also have an actual system where we might be taking some measurements. Now, um, we have a simulated output, but these two may not agree. Um, or we may want to try to uh, discover something that's happening with um, some of our states um, here in our model of our system that we can't necessarily measure. Or um, we want to try to adjust parameters in our model so that our model becomes more accurate for future predictions. So there's a lot of reasons why we would want to do uh, dynamic estimation. A general form that we're going to use is to minimize an objective function in this case, uh, this is our measurement um, right here, and then our model prediction on the right. And uh, this is a, uh, a norm. This could either be a one norm. So that would be y measure minus model absolute value. Um, it could be a, uh, a two norm, um, where we have y measured minus y uh, model squared and then uh, we take the square root of that or to the one half. We could also have the infinity norm um, where that's y measured minus y model to the infinity um, one over infinity so that's going to be um, to minimize the maximum value uh, or the maximum deviation between the measured and the model. Okay so um, all of these are, are valid um, methods to do this. A lot of times we do in, in estimation, we just do a uh, sum of squared errors, for example. Um, but it's going to be subject to this dynamic model um, that uh, we've derived that might be differential and algebraic equations. We might have equality or inequality constraints in this model. Okay, so uh, data for empirical models. Sometimes we have um, data and, and then we can just construct a model that might not, um, that, that's just going to be determined from the data. We don't know any special structure for our model. Um, let's just look at a linear first order equation just as an introductory example. So this is, has a time constant tau and a gain k and it relates um, input p. Um, here's our system to output uh, v. Okay, so we have a gain. Um, now this is this gain, we can calculate this if we have, uh, if we're at steady state, so this term is zero, then uh, velocity is just going to be the gain times the p. Um, and so the gain is just going to be, um, this is going to be delta v over delta p. So if we have a change in p, we can calculate a change in the value v. Okay, so um, let's say we just start with a value of zero for p1 and v1. Um, and then let's say P2 is, um, let's see, point 0.2, let's just say uh, point 0.2 is 20, and let's do V2 is, is also going uh, to be 20, then that means we would be a, a gain of 1. Okay, um, time constant, um, this is after a step change in the input, it's the time to reach 63.2% uh, of the steady state value. So if we have a change, um, a step input, and let's say this is our value for P, then our velocity of V might go up like that. This is going to be 63% um, of this total change. And then from where the step happened, that's going to equal a tau. Okay, that's just, that just applies to um, this equation right here. Okay, so where did, that, where did that come from? So let's just go ahead and take this equation and we'll separate and integrate. Um, so I'm gonna bring all of the V terms onto this side and all the time terms onto that side and then integrate it. Um, here's my uh, solution after I integrate and uh, just rearrange and solving for V that is my uh, solution. So if time equals tau, then uh, this is going to be e to the e to the negative one. So I have one minus e to the negative one, and that's 0.632. 
okay, or if I plugged in uh, infinity for time, uh, then this term right here is, uh, this is going to go to 1, and so I just let, I'm left with k times p. Okay, you can also use Laplace transforms to solve this. Um, I don't want to go through all of this. One thing I do want to point out, though, is that this is called a transfer function. Okay, so if I have an input uh, p of s, then uh, that relates to the output v of s by this uh, transfer function. So the transfer function turns uh, the p value into a v value, for example. Okay, but we got um, the same answer that we did on this side um, with Laplace transforms and separate and integrate. Okay, so we're going to work an example in Excel. That'll be the following video. But I just want to show um, just kind of an overview of this. We're going to adjust these model parameters right here to try to match up the model value of velocity to the measured value. So let's say we took some measurements. These were the measurements. Okay, and uh, we currently with these parameters right here, we have um, this red line right here. Those are my model predictions. Okay, we want to try to align those by adjusting uh, these parameters. And we're, so we'll do that with uh, Excel Solver. But we want to try to minimize uh, by changing k and tau. We want to try to minimize the difference between the measured and the model value that's going to be subject to uh, these equations. Okay, so um, we can also do this in MATLAB, and I'll show you how to do this in MATLAB as well. Um, so these are my initial parameters. Those are just maybe the ones that I guessed. And we're trying to estimate k and tau for this uh, vehicle, and that gives me this, this red line. Um, actually, the, the blue line. Uh, that's the predicted. Okay, yeah, but my um, actual parameters are going to give me this um, red line right here. So I want to try to shift this up so it's aligned with the uh, one above it at all of these time points where I took uh, the measurements. Okay, and so I'm going to set up this um, estimation problem uh, using optimization. Um, now in this case, it's going to be a least squares, but I'm going to have to solve this um, and minimize this objective function. Okay, so this is how we set it up in MATLAB. Um, this is uh, just to clear uh, the session. I'm going to add the AP Monitor uh, package, and that's available at apmonitor.com for download. Uh, set up a server and application name. The first thing I'm going to do is go ahead and clear all of the uh, you know the prior application, and then I'll load in a model file, Ferrari.apm, and Ferrari.csv. Uh, that's my data file. Um, I'm going to specify that K and B, those are going to be the ones I'm going to try to estimate, and then I'm going to try to fit uh, my velocity. Um, I'm going to change this I mode value to 5. That is a dynamic um, estimation. Okay, and then um, I'm going to adjust the number of internal nodes. Okay, so for every time step, I'm going to have an extra node right here. So I have 1, 2, 3. And then my next one is 1, 2, 3. Okay, so that can be between um, 2 to 6. Okay, using a higher number just increases the amount of time it takes to solve um, and uh, makes it a little bit more accurate. Okay, so, um, and then I'm going to finally solve it. Okay, issue the solve command. And then I'll display this um, output from the solve command, solve command, and then I want to retrieve the solution. Okay, so that's going to be with the APM under bar SOL, and then um, I'm just going to transfer the results to the variable Z and open up a web viewer. Okay, so that's dynamic estimation. Uh, this, these are the results um, from the MATLAB session. So you can see that the actual parameters and the optimized parameters, you, it's fairly close. Um, and uh, you can see that um, you know the predictions are right on top of each other. 
Okay, so we can also do this in, in Simulink as well. Um, so this is more of a, like a, emulating a real-time system. So if, if we were to start the car and uh, start going, uh, we don't necessarily have all the data available, but it, it, the data will become available and will update the estimator um, with a, you know, this Bayesian approach to estimation, whereas we get more information, we update the parameter estimates. Um, and uh, then we're just going to view the uh, parameters and uh, also the measurements that come from this estimator. Okay, so that's uh, the final one that we're going to show. Um, one thing to note, um, just for this simple linear system, sometimes we can also uh, generate a contour plot to be able to show how as we change our you know, time constant and gain. Time constant and gain, this is just a 3D version and this is just a 2D version of the same information, that this might be our optimal value, but as we move away from that, we're going to have a worse objective function. Now you can see also in this region right here, it's a very flat region. So sometimes it's hard for the solver to find an answer, um, yeah, because this is a very small objective function change. Okay, and then we can also look at it this way here. It, it comes up like right here, and then it's very um, flat right in that area right there. Okay, so that's um, all the discussion for dynamic estimation introduction. The next section is going to be uh, dynamic control, um, where the first section was dynamic modeling. We just covered dynamic estimation. And the future section, uh, dynamic uh, control.